In this video, we're going to be learning how to use right triangle trigonometry in order to find missing sides. So we can use trigonometry and our acronym SOHCAHTOA to find the missing sides of right triangles. So here are the steps that we're going to be working through. We're going to find, number one, the acute angle in the diagram that's labeled with its measure. Then we're going to start labeling the triangle. We're going to label the hypotenuse, and then using the angle from step one as a reference, we're going to label the opposite side and the adjacent side. Then we're going to determine which trig function is best used, and we're going to use SOHCAHTOA to determine that. Then we'll set up our trig equation, cross multiply and divide to solve and round accordingly. So let's jump into some examples here. You will need your calculator for this and you will want to double check that your calculator is in degree mode. All right, let's take a look at number one. We're gonna solve for X to the nearest 10. So the angle that we have in the picture, the acute angle is 42 degrees. Okay, so we're gonna be using that as a reference. This side that is the hypotenuse of the right triangle is the side where the 10 is. So I'm just gonna put an H on that side for hypotenuse. Where the 42 is, that's our angle that we're gonna use as a reference. The opposite side is where the X is. And the adjacent side, the one next to it, is the bottom or the base of this triangle. Okay, so based on this, we now have to decide, are we gonna use sine, cosine, or tangent? And in this case, this is going to be using sine. And we're gonna use SOHCAHTOA Remember our acronym, SOHCAHTOA, to help us remember this. So here's how I know which one to pick. If you notice, our variable is on the opposite side, O for opposite, and a value that we know, 10, is on the hypotenuse. So since we're using O and H, we are going to use sine. All right, so we're going to set it up as sine of 42 is equal to the opposite over the hypotenuse, which is 10. I'm gonna put sine of 42 over one and cross multiply. I get X equals 10 sine 42. We always wanna make sure sine 42 stays together. Don't flip flop the 10 and the 42. And then we just type this in our calculator. So 10 times sine 42, and we're rounding to the nearest 10th, and I get that X is 6.7 in this case. Okay, let's try another. Number two. We're gonna jump into labeling our sides. Here's our hypotenuse, here's opposite, here's the adjacent. Now that I have something on the opposite side and the adjacent side, that's O and A, that means I'm going to use tangent. So tangent of 40 is equal to nine over X. Okay, so again, if you think about SOHCAHTOA, right, and we think about these acronyms, TOA has opposite and adjacent involved. All right, let's put tangent of 40 over one and we're gonna cross multiply, but you'll notice this time this does not have the X isolated. So we're gonna have to do this extra step of dividing both sides by tangent 40. So nine divided by tangent 40 and we're looking to round to the nearest hundredth. So I have X is equal to 10.73 as our answer for number two. Once you get the hang of this, the problems do become pretty repetitive. Um, it's just a matter of always making sure you're picking the right trig function. All right, let's keep going with some more practice problems. Number three, our hypotenuse is where the 21 is. The opposite side is blank. The adjacent side is where the X is. Okay, so just remember the opposite side, if you have trouble with that, is the one that's across from that acute angle that's labeled in the picture. Okay, so based upon that, I'm going to pick cosine in this case because I have A and H. So cosine of 37 is equal to X over 21, adjacent over hypotenuse. Cross multiply, I have X equals 21 cosine 37. And I'm going to put that in my calculator. I'm looking to the nearest hundredth and I have 16.77. Number four, we're solving for x to the nearest 10th. Okay, again, let's go in and label our sides. This is going to be an example using tangent. So tangent of an angle is equal to the opposite side over the adjacent. So tangent of 53 is equal to the opposite over the adjacent. Cross multiply. And then we are going to divide by tangent 53 because we have to get X by itself. So keep in mind, anytime X is in the denominator, you will have to do that extra step. 
and I'm just gonna go type that into my calculator and round accordingly. So it looks like we get X is 12.9 for number four. Number five, let's label our sides. Okay, again, don't rush that step. The hypotenuse is the side across from the right angle. Whatever your labeled acute angle is, whatever's across from that, that's the opposite. And then the remaining side is the adjacent. So this is a cosine problem because I have adjacent and hypotenuse, A, H. So cosine is equal to the adjacent over the hypotenuse. X is in the denominator, so I know when I cross multiply, I will also have to divide. And so I have 6.2 divided by cosine 48. And we're looking to the nearest whole number here, so I get X is 9. All right, a few more. Hopefully it's starting to seem repetitive. Solve for X to the nearest hundredth for number 6. So we are going to label... And this is another cosine problem. So the cosine of 21 is equal to the adjacent over the hypotenuse. Cross multiply. And we're going to go to our calculator. 10 times cosine 21. And to the nearest hundredth, I get 9.34. All right, two more. Number seven, solve for x to the nearest tenth. Our hypotenuse is blank. The opposite side is 9.7. The adjacent side is x. Since there's something on the opposite and adjacent, that's the TOA part, so tangent. So tangent of 19 is equal to 9.7 over x. We're going to put this over 1, cross multiply, and then divide. So 9.7 divided by the tangent of 19 to the nearest tenth, I get X is 28.2. All right, last problem, everybody. So eight, we're solving for X to the nearest thousandth. So opposite, hypotenuse, and adjacent sides are labeled. I am going to be using sine here because I have opposite and hypotenuse. So sine of 38 is equal to x over 17. Once again, hopefully the math again is starting to make sense. We're going to cross multiply. So 17 times the sine of 38. And we're looking for the nearest thousand. So three decimal places. So that gives me 10.466 as our answer for number eight. The next video in this playlist will go over how to use right triangle trigonometry in order to find missing angles.